Welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend that takes us to the middle of meteorological summer. And there'll be a bit of everything over the next 10 days or so. Some heat and humidity, some thunderstorms, and then back to more changeable classic summer weather perhaps next week. First of all, though, a quick glimpse of what's going on high up in the atmosphere that led to developments that we saw across the Netherlands earlier today. This is the jet stream, one arm of it to the south of the UK, another one up to the west. And this uh, part of the jet stream here, this, this bit here, we call this a left exit. And then this bit here would be a right entrance to a jet. And they're both key development areas. So when you get these two features very close to each other, what you get is a lot of air rushing up. And that's what developed this air of low pressure and intensified it into quite a nasty storm named Storm Polly by the German Weather Service. It brought to the UK a lot of heavy rain. But then look at that. The isobars really pinching together there, bringing those unusually strong winds across the Netherlands earlier that, earlier that caused quite a bit of uh, disruption. That low pressure system heading across Denmark and clearing away from the UK. Meanwhile, low pressure systems are gathering and moving closer to the UK. Now, you might imagine that this low out in the Atlantic would whiz across the UK in a similar fashion uh, to Storm Polly. But that's not going to happen because we're seeing a change in the weather patterns high up in the atmosphere. What actually happens is that low comes close and then gets drawn up to the north. Another one follows in behind and these kind of dark Dumbbell around each other for a while before merging into one area of low pressure that sits out to the west for the next three or four days and controls our weather from there. Why that shift? Well, it's because of the change in what's going on with the jet stream. We're seeing this more amplified weather pattern where as the jet's been coming more directly across from the Atlantic in recent times, we've got this amplified jet and this trough, this dip in the jet stream is breeding ground for low pressure systems. And it kind of all gets encompassed in together and it kind of just generates itself into a, a swirling mass as we head towards the second half of the weekend. And that's why that low pressure system kind of gets stuck in one place. However, there are signs as we go into next week that the jet will reorientate itself back into this more zonal flow, this more westerly flow uh, at the start of next week, but never particularly strong. So what does that mean for our weather patterns? Well, we're obviously going to be dictated to by this low pressure system, but it doesn't always mean just wet and cool conditions. The way these lows interact will actually mean we start to see something a little bit hotter. But first of all, we will have the rain from that low coming in across the northwest during Thursday, generally dry across central and eastern parts. And then another pulse of rain comes in across Northern Ireland and Western Scotland during Friday. But with the wind Winds by now coming up from the south, drawing up warmer and warmer air. So, particularly so by Friday, where we've got the sunny skies across central and eastern England, temperatures really jumping up once more, back up towards 30 degrees Celsius. I like to see 30 somewhere, I suspect, across eastern England. But there will be quite a temperature contrast on Friday between the northwest with a strong breeze and the outbreaks of rain, 20 or 21 at best here, but probably feeling pretty humid everywhere. Now, if we fast forward to Saturday, the heat becomes a little more concentrated. It's more focused again across the east, but not on the east coast because the breeze will be bringing in some cooler conditions along that coastal strip. Still, the wind's generally coming up from the south, but it's not as hot further west because a weather front will be moving in. And that weather front is likely combining with the heat and humidity, that weather front bringing the moisture and those three ingredients likely to spark some big thundery downpours on Saturday as this weather front moves in. Difficult to pinpoint detail at this stage, but the potential for some really quite nasty storms uh, on that weather front as it gradually edges in during the course of Saturday. So if you've got plans for Saturday, do keep up to date with the forecast. It's going to be hot and humid, particularly so in the east, but everywhere feeling pretty sticky, I suspect. And then that uh, likelihood of some intense thunderstorms, dropping a lot of rain, large hail, lightning, all that kind of jazz for uh, typical summer thunderstorms. But these could, as I say, be pretty intense ones before things start to turn fresher from the west as that weather front. It's a cold front, so it's introducing cooler air from the west. As that low moves its way northwards, you can see that weather front pivoting northwards and introducing the cooler air, pushing the hot and humid air away during Saturday night and into Sunday. Notice the heat, the warmth there, never too far away from the southeast. So just the potential for further warmth and humidity to be close to the southeast during Sunday and into Monday, perhaps bringing 
some further thunderstorms. But the main activity will be this low that we saw earlier, just grinding around because of the uh, position of the jet stream, likely then to bring that fresher air in during Sunday and Monday, but also still to be pushing showers in from the Atlantic, because by the time we get to Monday, Tuesday, the jet stream has reorientated itself. So more of a, a westerly flow. We lose the southerly flow that's bringing the heat on Friday and Saturday, and we're back to westerly conditions into next week. And that is likely to last for much of next week. If we look at the uh, zonal trend, this is telling us the trend between easterlies or westerly winds, where westerlies are blue. I showed this last week. It was all blue uh, for, for much of this week, as we've seen. But you can see there it goes more neutral, it goes green as we go into the weekend because we get the southerlies for a time. But the main signal from Monday, Tuesday onwards is that westerly winds will return. Now, if we look at whether we're more likely to see northerly or southerly winds next week, strong signal here, as we've seen, the reds over the weekend. We're going to get that southerly push, so we are going to see temperatures rising by day and by night. But then as we go towards the second half of next week, it goes blue with the dates going along the top there, suggesting that northerlies are more likely. So that combination, you combine, combine this graphic with the previous one, suggests that northwesterly winds are likely to dominate. And that is backed up by the computer output. Uh, hopefully you can see this. This is uh, the European model when we run it many times, ensemble forecast, and where the average pressure is going to be. And you can see the low pressure as we run through next week, Tuesday or Wednesday. The signal there is that the low will actually migrate its way from the west of the UK up to somewhere across Scandinavia. When the low's up here, the wind's going around that way. That means a northwesterly wind is the most likely wind direction. And this graphic kind of sums up where we're most likely to see the showers from that northwesterly wind. As you can imagine, the wind's coming in from the northwest. It's the northwestern areas that see most of the showers in this setup. So this is showing the probability of seeing any rainfall on each of the days through the working week next week. Quite a high probability with the low sitting close by, uh, particularly in the the West, very high chance of seeing showers uh, through next Monday. And as we go through towards the back end of next week, just the, the colours changing there, becoming a little lighter, particularly across the south and southeast. So the probability of seeing showers reducing as we go through next week across the south and southeast. But all the while, the probability is highest across Western Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northwest England. That's where we're likely to see showers pretty much every day through the course of next week. And another thing we can look at is the temperature profile during next week. Again, with a northwesterly wind, as you might imagine, the wind's coming in from the northwest mostly. It will be the southeast that sees the, the most sunshine and the highest temperatures. So that's where we're most likely to see temperatures. This, this graphic is showing the probability of temperatures over 20 degrees Celsius. And you can see there, if I just move out of the way, high chance across the eastern areas really throughout the week and very little chance chance across the northwest of those temperatures getting up and above 20 degrees Celsius. So with that northwesterly flow, we are going to see showers chopping and changing the weather through much of next week with most of the showers or the showers most days, but most frequent showers across the north and the west, whereas things perhaps turning a little drier as that low pulls away towards the back end of next week. But always with the winds coming in from the northwest, again, generally staying temperatures around average or perhaps a little bit below with that changeable theme to continue. Now, as always, for day-to-day -day details, stay up to date with the forecast through next week. If you're watching on YouTube, hit like and hit subscribe and make sure you're following us across all of the social medias.